So I give the floor to Nikolai Vedenkin, who is the president, and he will tell us what he is the president of. I'm the president of the foundation to restore Russian uh, engineers. I just uh, had a problem. I want to talk about engineers and about how we train them, not only in Russia, but elsewhere in the world. My presentation is 100 slides, but I'll try to make it quick. I'll be very brief. When I work at Moscow State University, I took students from the third year, third year students. They came to my lab for satellite software development, and they had no idea what they were doing there. Having encountered a student who had no knowledge, I asked him, why did you get enrolled in this school, in this faculty, even if you don't want to know what we're doing here? Why are you taking somebody else's place? So from that point onward, I thought we need to go down to school level. And uh, we joined CONSAT project, an international project, which later became an engineering school. And the object here was to measure temperature and send the information down to the Earth. The ideology of the World Championship is that it's done within a short period of time. The kids get a task. It is announced by NASA ESA. Here it is announced by Kari with Satrak in Korea. And the kids do these tasks, puzzles. The group get together for a few days to launch it at the rockets. They get information, defend it, and that's it. In Russia, it didn't work like it everywhere else, although there was a need for that. We managed to do training. It was a championship, a big championship that starts in September and ends in Seoul. Sorry, so in Ju July, I mean. Yeah. Ends in July. Yeah. Slip of tongue, sorry. And then, against this background, we started to communicate with different countries. Different countries started to work with us. Mexico, Myanmar, Thailand, we are negotiating with Korea, we have been negotiating and cooperating with Madagascar, African countries and so on. I will tell you more about it later on. So the Aero Engineering School, international experience, what do we do? As I told you, this is a small satellite that we launch for one or two kilometers that sends us telemetric data and the moment, most important part for the kids is to uh, assemble it and launch it. This is about engineers who do controllers, doing soldering and mass control. It must be more than 350 grams to understand volume, to put everything inside together with the parachute, the rescue system, who designed the rockets and so on. When in 2009 we started to do this, the first championship took place in 2011 because we tried to understand how it works and to prepare for it. But now the school has grown. It's quite large now. We started with a small satellite, and now we have the so-called Le Junior League. And uh, kids from 6th to 8th grade became inspired because the regular league is 8th to 10th grade because that's where they need to know physics and chemistry. But kids from the 6th grade we had in our championship, kids from the 6th grade, who participated. And that's why we have expanded that age group and in the junior league. Later on, the Supreme High League is 9th through 11th grade and the first year university students and the Aero Engineer School is moving on and each year kids have other needs and we mustn't abandon them. They 
demand expansion of geography, not only expansion of geography of our influence, because now the school is, has offices in 46 regions of Russia. More than 240 schools are involved, not only schools. We have Contoria, but they got connected later. These are like children's art schools, small clubs. Contoria actually are not connecting willingly. They're quite reluctant working with hardware. I know why. And then, of course, now we have the student league. When our kids have grown old enough to become students, then we have guys who launch rockets as long as this model sport does exist in Russian Federation, but it is um, restricted by different regulatory network regulatory regulatories or regulations and which simply invite kids who want to build different rockets, different rockets, single stage, double stage, three stage, anti stabilizing ro uh, rockets. We simply do not use uh, gunpowder because it's prohibited. We use caramel which is fortunately uh, is allowed. And then we have GERD too. Korolev de deserves the credit for that. Then kids from Copter came in. They said that there is no championship for Copters and I want to participate with Copters and uh, we thought about it. And then we decided not to do only Copters, but now we have drones and other things. All of that led to the expansion of the so-called out of copters they became unmanned aerial vehicle UAV it has a different task not like satellites and rockets their task is to look for fires automatically they have to move through the path uh, two kilometer long and find fires which we specifically organize for them sometimes simply a red line sometimes a real fire or a person is lying around they need to detect the fire they uh, origin of fire, the operator cannot see anything, and the uh, and automatically they must send the coordinates to the on-ground station. Now, even with the use of open CV, nobody has won there. Nobody could automatically download the coordinates and make a system for that. And then in 2018, come the guys who whose uh, flying vehicles cannot be considered neither as rockets nor as UAVs, and this, that's why we decided to have a separate league called uh, Unidentified Flying Object UFO. They also do GERD part when they have to raise the satellite and s do the separation. This could be all sorts of different craft, and this year we have introduced a new league because GERD was growing. We have introduced Super GERD, uh, super heavy rockets working in super heavy engines that we have Later on, I will show it to you. So about Junior League, they do the cowling. They save the head part. Children make this thing, uh, program it. They assemble everything themselves. When it starts in September, they submit their applications, then go to different. We organize certain lectures. And then at the end of January, they come to Moscow University whether we have a whole term and about out of 200 teams we select the teams there is a certain threshold that they can go through but we do not suppress anybody we try to allow anybody who meets this threshold requirements but on the average about 70 teams can go through this threshold so every year about 70 teams can go through this threshold and then kids come for the winter session and they're not supposed to show a working uh, craft, they need to defend the idea, prove that they can do this. And then after the short listing, they come to a summer session where the actual launches take place. The first stage is done by us as later so that there is no problem during the championship and the head part, the cowling is done by kids. Uh, the main task for them is to save the head part, the cowling and pre measure pressure, temperature and to submit this information by radio channel down to us. Then the uh, regular league, it's more heavy uh, rockets. There is no Arduino, and uh, kids use our ARV studio here, or they program it in uh, assembler or C. Depends on their teacher and how they work there. Then they measure temperature, pressure, and by radio channel also send this information to ground station. This year they have improved it. They now have to have three axles accelerometer, and they have to measure 
uh, the flight and build a 3D trajectory of flight. This is the source of power. They have to put it all together, assemble and solder it together. This is what they need to learn in the course of the whole year. Scientific tasks, they can select any one of those. The only thing we do not allow them to use is pyrotechnics because usually it drops down into uh, dry grass. We don't want to extinguish the fire or it can uh, drop down into somebody's house and we don't allow them to use animals. So these are the preconditions because there was one school child from Samara with a biotechnological lyceum. They wanted to launch a mouse. Every year they came to us with a mouse. They wanted to launch mouse. They wanted to measure adrenaline before and after the flight. We said that it will grow up anyway. They didn't trust us, but we didn't allow them to use a live animal for that. We'll see how it works out later. Speaking about satellites, satellites can be different. Some of them are even made from wood, uh, collapsible ones, standard erector sets. Our kids are quite inventive about that, and thank God it gives us hope that the engineering directions and the smart people in Russia continue to exist, and not only Russia, in the world as well, because we had Mexican uh, guys, Thai guys participating in this project work. Next, high leak. It means that the kids who have gone through a regular league, uh, they already have a one kilo and they develop a uh, system without our erector set. Here you can see the winner of the league, not, not a winner, but one of the prize winners of the league who made a copter in under one kilo. So it went through the rocket and uh, they didn't win because of one sim simple reason. I always tell my kids, it's better for you to be mistaken now than in a real spacecraft because the error was simply programmer based the programmer not to do it forever simply put in the Kazan coordinates and when they came to Vladimir it was supposed to return back to the starting point it uh, came out of the rocket and flew to Kazan they found it four kilometers out of there it landed in forest and that programmer's mistake uh, was the only one why they couldn't get the first prize. They didn't win, and that's a pity. I keep saying it's better for you to make a mistake now, here and there, instead of making a mistake there. And it's better to do it right here. Then, student league. Our kids grow up, they moved on, now they have one kilo. Form factor is Kupsat, of course, because it's more convenient. And their task was, again, they had a list of tasks. They had to take a photo, measure different parameters, and uh, most importantly, throughout the whole flight, there should be a communication line. But as long as we don't have 30 kilometers uh, range, we launch them with the probe balloon. We raise them up to 30 kilometers, then the balloon pops up, and the system goes down on by parachute. We find it, and the kids analyze the data and defend their work. Then I will speak about the evolution of our launches in 2011 when the first launch took place. We didn't have rockets. We couldn't bring them in because there were no engines, no heavy engines. And a heavy engine, we started to develop heavy engines ourselves. And in 2011, we used only a helicopter launch, then a uh, quadcopter than the balloon and only in 2014 we started to launch rockets 70 meters 200 meters 800 meters and now in 2020 we want to launch uh, 1,000 meters uh, previous ones uh, used 350 grams now we're going to do it one kilo weight and they uh, Supreme League, High League, they do it twice to to make sure that the rocket survives first time around. And a few pictures to show. This is the first championship. This is the uh, image captured by the satellite uh, when it was dropped from the helicopter. Now, on the copter, we raised some satellites. That was the balloon drop. That's the, bi the person took this picture. Then our first rocket. The rocket is fully made out of paper. There are no metal objects in case of the explosion. Nobody would suffer. And we try to minimize any hazards or risks here. Then the heavier 
rocket which can launch up to 200 meters. This one is good for 800. This is a heavy rocket, which goes, actually, it goes as high as two and a half kilometers, so I thought two and a half kilometers. The range of search will be five kilometer radius, and to look for it would be too difficult, especially we are going to suburbs of uh, Vladimir region that will be unrealistic because they have forests and wetlands there and we decided to reduce the altitude but increase the number of attempts. These are our engines, the smallest one, 100, uh, 300 and uh, 1500 one, which is used for heavy uh, r rocket. We'll be using it for Super League, Super League GERD. In fact, no, it's not everything as smooth as it seems, because everybody is um, trying to prove that all our rockets are perfect. No, it's not so. Rockets are not perfect, and the engines can sometimes uh, penetrate or burst up the rocket. Anything can happen to the rocket that guys bring in, because they're used to make uh, paper rockets with very lightweight engines, say 20 or something, but when they put in a heavy engine, they don't know how to calculate it. and. Often you have to teach them for a whole year. So first they use 100 and 300, now we have 1500. So these are some processes. Sometimes we have to go down at 4 o'clock because the wind is very strong and the uh, rockets more than 7 meters per second cannot be launched. It's, it goes beyond and that's why we have to launch it either at 4 o'clock in the morning or even night time to do the championship. Here is the GERD. I told you about different leagues, different altitudes, different rockets. This is anti-stabilizer rocket. This is a helicopter descent rocket. And there are, there are raketo plants. This is a UAV. This is the UFO. See, guys brought this UFO. They said, we want to launch it. We know how to do it. Of course, it didn't really fly. It was jumping all over the field like this. It was jumping all over the field, but an important thing is not to suppress the engineering interest of kids, because they've been building it for a whole year, and now for second year they're offering the same project, but they, they have improved it. They understand that the engines were not powerful enough, they need to install other ones, and it's important to support them with this. And this is what we are doing. Next, what the team might consist of. Of course, the team leader, the captain, hard, hardware prog programmer, physicist, designer. In principle, we don't care in terms of the championship. We are not restricting the number of kids in the school. Let it be a whole school. The only thing we restrict is the uh, personal interview session because we cannot receive everyone. For instance, on the 30th uh, it will be the end of the enlistment period or registration, and we have already received 186 applications, 186 uh, teams uh, with three, four persons per team. Can you imagine so many people? We try to shortlist them. This is what uh, specialists from the in industry are doing. In 2015 or 2016, I don't remember, Roscosmos included us into strategic programs. They consider our program strategically important to support education on Russia, and we are supported to in this project activities. And uh, we participate in many sectors here and also provide assistance to Roscosmos in terms of uh, training target students for them, because our project is not for Olympic Games. Olympic students, not all Olympic students are capable of sitting for hours and solder things together. This is a thing not every kid can do, but there are many kids who are not extra smart, but they're very diligent, industrious, they like engineering, and they find themselves in this project. And they enjoy doing this, and many kids, almost 86% of kids going through our project then end up in Bumps, Mai, Samara, or Nizhny Novgorod Radio University, Moscow State University, uh, where they should go, uh, either to specialized uh, departments. Many of them have graduated from the fourth year studies already, and they continue working there, and eventually start working in the industry. And the industry guys are happy to receive them. And some of the teams, this is the team from Kazan, the Russian team from Minsk. This is Shumirla. That's a small village where 
they didn't even have not a single university, just um, some kind of branch of a vocational school, but they're very strong guys there. They were second best because Belsat was the first one, but it was a bigger task for them. Mag 3 from St. Petersburg, this girl here went to military mechanical department and there, there she built a student's team. They built a rocket and last year they were awarded first prize. These are guys from Yakutia. This guy is in Mai, fourth year student. He's already a bachelor. This guy is uh, studying at the physical department. I told you about the infrastructure, how many kids usually come to us, about 400 and so many teams, uh, but this this is the average statistics because now we have received 186 applications, but of course not all 186 will come to us. Some of them reject themselves, so maybe 120 will come, 120 teams. It will be about 360, 370 people. Then traditionally we do the closing ceremony in energy and last year we did in the cosmos I'm talking about winter session then we start preparing for the summer session we're doing the selection of about 70 teams after which it was in 2015 at the Tolda uh, testing ground this is Vladimir testing ground more people here many times more this is these are some pictures from the place where they work they keep soldering programming something this is 14 minutes before the launch they try to reboot the system i would tell them don't do this they still do this you understand these are kids it's hard to argue with them but we try to teach them anyway so this is the reception station all sorts of uh, launches nothing can be seen from 800 meter uh, they build their own reception stations. There are satellites that we cannot find. We have to find uh, look th for them for hours and even days, especially in tall grass. And then they find their satellites, which is great. Now, the geography of our activities is quite broad. Here you can see the main points which we visit, which include Thailand, Belarus, Mexico, Korea, in Russia, we are represented in uh, 46 different regions. But the problem there is that it highly depends on teacher. Some kids are self-sufficient, self-reliant, but it's really tough. But it all comes down to teachers. So we try to support teachers so that they would form such groups. In 2018, we organize Russian South Korean conference in Moscow on such systems. As you can see, participation rate was not particularly high because the winners of Kansat uh, typically travel to Japan, but at the moment, South Korea Japan relations are not as good. So we expect many more participants to come to Kansat next week, November 4th through 9th. We'll have lectures, museum, t tours, a lot of theory. It will take place in Cosmos Hotel. And we'll have participants from Thailand. This is 2017. The delegates came to us and they saw they saw that uh, the rockets and canset are all intertwined. So next year the scientific museum of Thailand, which was responsible for satellites and it conducted its own chairmanship and the Defense Institute was responsible for rockets and uh, it organized its own championship so now they have unified championship where uh, they make both rockets and um, satellites and there is an exchange of champions between Thailand and Moscow. Mexican kids are all also there. 
Uh, you really don't have time. Yeah, I'm wrapping up. Since Suresh Cosmos continually told us about the need to participate in different activities, we came up with a quick to assemble a receiving station and in Yaroslavl we tested this methodology where kids received data from Meteor. Then we did a session in our tech in 2018 where we received information from Meteor Enoa and then Nikolai and Olga invented their thing. We mostly talked um, about hardware, but it's great that we can operate in the same field. A ground station was established in Thailand. I taught them how to receive information from Meteor. They had no idea about Russian space industry, which is quite strange. And I really had to educate them on this. I guess that's it. That's all the information. This is the image from Noah. This is Thai Peninsula. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been a never-ending presentation. A lot of things went to it. I mean, it's impossible to pack what you are doing into 20-minute presentation. I just wanted to say that we are doing everything possible uh, to educate children. Are there any questions? I think it was an exhaustive presentation. We need to absorb the information. Yeah, let's give it up. Put our hands together.